Good afternoon, everybody. My name is David Parks. I'm with the Maryland Department of Agriculture. Good? Okay. Um, I'm the guy you've been waiting all day to see, okay? <laughs> so uh, the sheet will be going around to sign. Make sure you sign that along with putting your license number. Um, if you don't have your license number with you, at least put your name and, um, and uh, write down the last four digits of your Social Security, okay? And note that last four digits of Social Security number, please, okay? That helps the girls in the office know who you are. There's a lot of you and very few of us, okay? So this is an update for the MDA and as far as the pesticide regulations. Um, some new um, regulatory, the federal regulatory update, um, new certification training rules went in effect March 2018, requires private applicators and certified and registered applicators to be at least 18 years of age. There are um, exclusions as far as um, farming and family members, so if you need details, you can check that out on our, in our regulations as well. Changes requiring annual training for registered applicator employees applying restricted use pesticides, okay? So if you're not a certified applicator yet and you're a registered employee, <clears throat> you have to, uh, a registered applicator employee, you have to take annual training versus becoming a certified applicator. Uh, Mr. David hit on a paraquat as far as um, the gramoxone, okay? Um, there is a new label for gramoxone that is out now. Okay, and Dave hit on the closed container system, which is due out in October of this year. Um, there is also a new restricted use label in regards to gramoxone paraquat dichloride. You can no longer be a, a registered employee. You must now be a certified applicator in order to apply paraquat dichloride or gramoxone. Okay, and that also in the label right now is including this. Um, this is a hot topic on the ag side. And the EPA is currently going through and reevaluating that verbiage because it does say mixing, loading, handling. Those, that verbiage includes like their drivers, things of that nature. So they are reevaluating this, this um, label as we speak. But as of right now, this is the way the label's written and the label's law, okay? So um, one thing that we do, how many people are private applicators in here? So a lot of you are private applicators. So, we at the MDA, we do recognize you as a private applicator as a quote unquote certified applicator. Okay, so you can do whatever you need to do with gramoxone and paraquat dichloride. That's kind of just our, um, we have to, at the MDA, we have to adhere to at least federal regulations with the EPA. Um, we in turn are implementing the 18 years of age minimum and also the, um, the 18 years of age impl um, implement pay imp the minimum and um, the required notification of sen uh, pesticide sensitive list if you're category eight. So if you're category eight, this applies to category three as well. Um, if you're applying adjacent to someone that's on that list, um, you have to notify them. The list is on our website <clears throat> and um, also, if you have either of those categories, you should have received that in the mail and or via email. If you have not, just please let us know. And like I say, that list is on our website as well. Field Watch is a good tool. Um, we do this in all of our updates as far as ag um, and or whatever category we do because it affects us all as far as pesticides. Um, I urge um, both um, sense people with sensitive crops to register their crops on Field watch. Beekeepers, I also urge them to um, register their beehives on field watch. I encourage agriculture applicators to and, uh, and farmers as well to look on this before applying, and some, applying a pesticide somewhere where there may be a, a sensitive crop and or bees, okay? So it's a good tool to use, it's all free. You can go in there, log on, create a, um, an account. Um, these are just a, two of the, a few of the hot spots that are um, either mark, they have individual icons, albeit bees, sensitive crops, vineyards, things of that nature. Um, we had an investigation this year involving a vineyard, so, um, you know, it's something that we have to keep an eye out for and know what's beyond that woods, especially with some of the volatility of these new pesticides, um, what's beyond that woods, you know, what's next door. And more and more people are throwing up these little, you know, niche crops all the time. Pollinator Protection Act. Um, this is something for the systemic neonicotinoids. 
Um, it's difficult for us at the MDA to regulate it the way the law is written um, because in essence, someone can go to a store or buy a systemic neonicotinoid, but they're just not supposed to apply it. They're supposed to have a certified applicator apply it or someone under their direct supervision. Um, it's very difficult for us to enforce that. They can go buy it and how, how many of them you think are gonna go hire an applicator to put it on instead of just spreading that on the rose bush or whatever they're spreading it on. Um, so what we've done, we've been kind of proactive in the fact that we're regulating it through the restricted use dealer license in the state of Maryland. So if you res sell restricted use pesticides in the state of Maryland, you must have a dealer's license, okay? So if it's a systemic neonicotinoid, now Maryland has regulations that is a quote unquote restricted use pesticide. So we've been to all your marketplaces, letting them know number one of the law, um, and if they would like to either be a dealer for those products or pull them off those shelves. 90% um, of them have chosen just to pull the few products that are listed for that off their shelves. Again, it's a systemic neonicotinoid it's labeled for outdoor use. This is our, our um, skeleton staff at the time being. Um, Mr. Rob Hofstetter is our program manager. We had uh, Mr. Dennis Howard for many years, worked at the department over 40 years. He retired this year. Um, Mr. Ellis Tinsley retired this past year. Mr. Ellis Tinsley, who was our supervising inspector, he retired, excuse me, he retired this year, our cert, last year. Our certification and training coordinator left for a state highway position, so we're operating on a on a thin, thin uh, on a tight ship, if you will. Um, Miss Jessica Coon, she is administrative officer, and then the office staff is Carolyn, Hannah, and Gina. So just when you're just we bring this up, number one, to let you see who is uh, who is in our department. Number two, rate it now. Just please exercise patience if you have any questions when you're calling into the ladies. So again, it's a lot of us and a few of you. These are territories, the inspectors that are involved with such. So um, we have Kelly is up here and Kelly's filling in for Mr. Ellis and the certification court training coordinator um, vacancy um, and the supervising inspector in vacancy. And uh, also she's helping out Rob. Some of you may know Rob Hofstetter, our director, um, has had a recent health scare. He's doing good, all is well. So he's on the road to recovery. He'll be back next Tuesday. But in the interim, um, Kelly's been filling in, doing a great job. She's had a lot on her shoulders. Braden Harpool's out in Western Maryland. Um, he is a new inspector. Um, he's in the area. So uh, we have Yapa down in, in Montgomery County, and then Bray down in Southern Maryland, and I have the Eastern Shore of Maryland, as you can see. Pesticide regulation overview. This just gives you a number how many, how many licenses and businesses and um, certified applicators and registered employees we have into uh, in the state. Um, I'll bring this one into a lot of people's attention right now. Um, as far as the registered employees, how many of them pertain to germoxone? I don't know what the percentage is, but if they are a registered employee, they can no longer spray germoxone. They must be applied germoxone or paraquat dichloride. They must become certified applicators. So that's a lot of registered employees most of which are on the home side. I'll try to go through this fast. I know you guys are ready to get out of here, aren't you? <laughs> so initial certifica certification, um, to become a certified applicator, must have one year of verified experience, college degree in the area, or complete a coursework online, okay? These are some of the manuals that are available on our website for free. Um, your core manual is your main one, then whatever category you'd like to get. The rest are available on our website for a charge. There are links and phone numbers you can call, be it like the University of Maryland, um, Washington University, there are a couple others um, that you can call and purchase the study material for the category that you wish to be registered in. Online certification credit courses. So um, it's a great tool to use. Um, it really is. I had two instances last year where a gentleman had to use those um, courses to obtain their recertification credits. Um, one gentleman had a heart attack the week before the course that was he was supposed to attend. That was the last one for the year that he could obtain his credits in. Um, the other gentleman, his daughter was out in an accident and she lived out west, so he went out to help her. And um, it was right before his only course. So they both chose to do the online option. 
Again, it's a great tool to use in the case of an emergency. I treat it as an emergency break because you can only use it every, once every three years, okay? Online renewal system. I don't know how many people saw this. This is your lovely little card. Please don't throw it away. But if you do, that registration number, once you have that renewal code, it doesn't change. Just keep that in mind, but it, just keep this card in a safe spot. I have one guy, he found his in an Acme flyer this year, so they will stick it in, in between things at times. So make sure you're shaking out those lovely little sales flyers you get in the, in the mail. Um, your certification numbers here, these are certification employee cards, registered employee cards. There's your certification number over there. Always bring your certification card to the meeting. Helps you with the number. Remember the number to write it on that sheet. Help the girls, okay? Enforcement update. This is a lovely little sign. As you know, <laughs> in regards to storage, you must have it marked. We carry these. If anybody needs any, um, I can certainly get you some. If you can't read that in the back, that says Department of Agriculture Inspection today. Hide all the bad stuff. Management. So that's come some of the things that we see. <laughs> um, just a few things here must immediately notify the department in case of pesticide accident incident flood spill um, there have been three reported incidents this past year business inspections and violations so if you're a licensed business these are a lot of the um, violations that we run into 215 inspections this year, the number is lower than normal because we're short two inspectors and staff as well because Kelly's been out and Braden just come on board um, not too long ago. Out of 215 inspections, 89 that have one or more violation. 41% is more than half, have more than one violation, so almost half, that's almost half, but it is improved from last year. <laughs> Third percent of violations were records. Guys, records, keep your records. Um, we have templates available on our website to let you know everything you need on, on your records. It'll, there's a slide in here as well. 30% um, of violations were records. It's just for your own good. You're just protecting yourself. That's what you need on your spray records. That's all the information that you need. If you want to take a picture of it again, it's on our website as well. That's the template that we carry. When I see this, when I'm doing an inspection and I see that, I check the columns, information's there, I know they have everything. It's really nice to have that when I do my inspections, makes it quick and painless for certain. Complaint investigations, 23 formal investigations last year, most of which were agriculture, most of which I did. Um, being on the shore, you know, I'm, we're predominantly ag here and uh, get in a lot of, uh, get into a lot of investigations on this side. Turf and ornamental complaints, um, the complaints are on rise, doesn't really pertain to you guys, this is right here, but um, just remember in a key point whenever you're applying or ever you're near any, any public area or road, someone's always watching you, just be careful. And if you see something, say something. We rely on your eyes just as much as well. That's really in regards to the category three with um, non-licensed guys spraying with their backpacks, don't have a license, you know, we like to know. If you see somebody, let us know. The Grimoxone label change has all been um, as a result of deaths by ingestion. I think there's been 17 deaths in the last 10 years by paraquat dichloride ingestion. A lot of them have been children um, drinking food bottles uh, or um, like uh, Gatorade bottles full of Grimoxone. Um, so that's a bad thing. Um, we steer away from that, of course, and urge you not to put things in any other container other than the original product package. If the product package that you do have, the pesticide container that you do have, loses its label, um, just remember, you can write the name of the product, the EPA number, signal word, and the percent of concentration, okay? That jug is still good, you know, even though the label's not off of it, just have to have that information on there. And same with the end use dilution, just write the end use dilution, concentrate, percentage of concentrate for dilution. Are you wearing your PPE? I go through this every time. I went to a sprayer demonstration one time and uh, we were in a room and they had, they were um, showing us a new style air induction tips. They turned on this sprayer demonstration. We're all standing there. They didn't say anything to us. They cut out lights. They had a blue light in the room. You could see everybody in the room had drift on it. Everybody had drift on them. 
And I was probably from here to this young lady over there away from it. And I still had drift on me. It was pretty amazing. Open your eyes to how volatile some of this stuff is and how it can disperse through the air and travel. So always wear your PPE. It's for your own protection. Something I always stress too, whenever you go home, make sure you wash your, keep your clothes and wash them separate. Don't hug your children before you get, get out of your clothes. You know, I did that for many years, unfortunately, without the knowledge of, of, um, of, what we have today and you know if you don't know you don't know so always try to bring that to everybody's attention as well labels you must have a label with you when you're spraying oh if it's on the jug that's fine if you want to use your phone, uh, phone to pull one up that's fine as well just remember i have had one instance in the last three years where a gentleman one was relying on his phone and he couldn't pull his label up because he was in a bad area okay so you must be able to get a signal to pull that label up Weather conditions, um, always check your weather conditions. Of course, you have to keep them on your records. And we use Weather Underground. We're doing investigations and looking into records. We can pull um, history, things of that nature. Unlicensed business initiative. Again, this is in regards mostly to category three. and People spraying without a license. There's not much that I get wrapped around the axle about. You guys are here spending time, ready to get out of here today. I understand. But you're here doing the right thing. I don't like people who don't do the right thing. You know, just do it and, and uh, do what you're supposed to, stay in compliance. Spotter and landing flies coming, guys. It's in Cecil and Harford County. Um, Cecil and Harford County are now quarantined um, as far as the spotter and landing fly. If you're doing any travels in regards to business in Cecil or Harford County, you must have a spotted, spotted landing fly permit. You can go online, just Google it, spotted landing fly permit, Maryland, it'll come right up. Have to take a quick little quiz. You can get your, uh, your permit to go into uh, Cecil and Harford County in regards to spotted lantern flies. Um, how many um, get involved with our recycle program? Anybody? So we have recycle locations throughout the state. They're listed there. If you can't see them, they're also on our website. Okay. Um, there's many of them throughout the state. Um, collection sites and also dates are on there. Um, we recycled 50 tons of plastic last year in regards to pesticide containers. So it's good for the environment, it's good for agricultural and, and uh, you know, um, for the products that you use, they use them for pallets to contain the pesticides, also use them for field tiles, things of that nature, drain tiles, they recycle the plastic, that's all part of a government program that they do. Um, when I first came on the department, my supervisor asked me, he said, do you mind physical labor? I'm like, no, nah, I grew up on a farm, I'm good. And he said, because once a year for one week, we do jug collection. And I said, that's fine, whatever we need to do, you know, basically. And uh, in my mind, I had this picture of us going around collecting these jugs that were monitoring some type of pesticide runoff, albeit concentration or something. Nope, for one, year out of the, for one week out of the year, we ride all around the state and we throw jugs in that chipper all day. That's jug collection. So, but it is a great program. It's good for the environment, like I say, and uh, appreciate if you... If you contribute, again, those are the area, the locations, dates, and times. My name is David Parks. I'm with the Maryland Department of Agriculture. You need a card? I've got plenty. You can contact me anytime. There's all our contact information. It's over, guys. Take a deep breath. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you very much. Have a good day.